Hello everyone, this is I am Sagar Shah and let me wish you a very very happy new year. Today morning, we put a post on different social media handles of Chess Base India asking our viewers, what are your chess resolutions for 2019? And when you go through them, you will find that some people want to beat a GM, some want to, you know, increase their rating, some want to get better at some phase of the game. But when I went through a lot of them, I found that there were a lot of people who wrote that I want to get better at endgame. And this is the phase of the game which is extremely important because once you learn the endgame, you know, you've mastered it. You play chess 960, you play any sort of chess. This is going to be extremely useful because the rules and the theory related to endgame will not change as long as the board dimensions 8 by 8 and the way the pieces move remains the same. So it makes complete sense to learn the endgame first. But uh, the big problem is that endgame is dull. It's boring. There are no real combinations. You know, you can't sacrifice your piece many times. You have to, you know, play slowly. However, don't despair because we have come up with a very, very interesting solution for this problem. The book that we have introduced today on 1st of January 2019 is Silman's Endgame Course. And this is the book can really, really help you to master the endgame. Now, why do I say so? So, when I was trying to improve at chess uh, and really finding it difficult, I came across books written by Jeremy Silman. Now, they, they ranged from uh, Reassess Your Chess, there was an, a book called Amateur's Mind, there was also one more, if I'm not wrong, uh, Reassess Your Chess Workbook, uh, and there was this book, Silman's Endgame Course. What I found about uh, Jeremy Silman is that he is an author with a difference. He's calm, he's patient, he tries to explain everything properly in his books, and at the same time, he engages in a dialogue with the reader and this is extremely important for me. When I'm reading his books, I never really feel bored because, you know, he's trying to converse, he's trying to talk to me. And this book, Silman's Complete Endgame Course, which can be useful for learning endgames right from beginners to IMs and GMs. Now, how is that possible? I would like to talk about this book. Uh, the book is actually divided into different chapters. Now, if you, if you look through it, there are chapters based on ratings. So the first chapter, or you can say the first section is Endgames for Beginners. So it's from unrated to 1999 rating. Then you have from, for class E players, 1000 to 1200. So each section is like around 30 pages of the book. Part 3 is about for the class D players, 1200 to 1400. Then you have C, 1400 to 1600, B is 1600 to 1800, A is 1800 to 2000, and then you have the expert, which is uh, 2000 to 2200, and finally, the masters, which is 2200 to 2400. So, you know, this is how they have really uh, cut across the book different and it's a very thick book if you look at it there are 530 pages uh, that are there uh, now this book is it costs 25 dollars but you have a special price uh, because we've got it i'm going to talk about it later but first let's just talk about the contents of this book now when you start from the beginner section, there are all these different sorts of mates like mate with the king and the queen against the lone king. Then there is a mate with a rook, bishop and knight. It goes on improving, the level keeps increasing. But it's not in this form, like many books have this format. Uh, you first learn how to mate, then you learn the pawn end games, then you learn the knight end games, then you go to the rook end games, then the queen end games. No. Here, it's like in the uh, section for 1200 to 1400, you learn all the essential pawn endgames, all the essential knight endgames, all the essential bishop and opposite color bishop endgames, queen endgames. So every time, every section you go into, you are increasing the level, 
but uh, all end games are covered in different sections. I like to give you an example of how Silmin is different. For example, let's talk about uh, the concept of triangulation in chess. You know, triangulation is something very, very interesting and at the same time it seems complicated. For example, this position here, it's white to play. What would you do here? Now, when you start thinking about this position, uh, it may not be so easy because if you go king d6, king d8, c7, king c8, king c6, draw. If you go king c5 in the first position, then he comes king c7 and there is no real way to make progress. But let's try to see how Silman tries to explain the concept of triangulation in his book. Uh, it's page number 170 and so Silman says, triangulation is seemingly complicated term that makes a chess player seem intellectually superior to everyone else when he says, I won because I triangulated my king, gained the opposition and ultimately left my opponent in Zugzwan. Very impressive indeed. The fact of the matter is that triangulations, the name of a very small, often uncomplicated maneuver designed to give your opponent the move and as a result, you the opposition. So you gain the opposition because of it. But don't pass this on to non-chess playing public. Why not let them continue to think that chess players are geniuses? <laughs> so now Silman goes on to give an example. And let's talk about it in this position. Uh, he, he says that does having the move make a difference? And to explain this, uh, he starts off with, can black successfully penetrate to f4 with his king? So, let's see what happens if it's black to move. King e5, king e3. Instead of king e5, if you do something else like say king c6, then I can just go king e3 and take the pawn. So, king e5, king e3, king d6, king into e4, king c6, king d3, king b6, king c3, king a5. And now it looks like, not so easy to make progress. If you go king b2, he comes king b4. But here white has a very powerful move. He can go b4, cb4 and king b3 when you are going to win back the pawn. So king b6, king into b4 and then <coughs> c5 is coming up. So Silman writes, okay, that was simple enough, but now let's see what happens, what is the result we get if white moves first and then you again have, so he's like patient, you know, he's not crammed everything in one paragraph, it's like first black to play, then white to move. Many people would play king e3 here, but after king e5, black takes the opposition and forces backwards, king e2, king f4 and white spawn falls like duck, ducks in hunting season. Clearly, the direct approach is a horrible failure in the diagram position. However, white can turn the tables by playing king d2 or king f2 and then after king e5, king e3 leaves white in the possession of the opposition. So that is the reason why uh, both king d2 and king f2 are triangulation maneuvers. White steps to the side and then moves diagonally forward to create a small triangle. Believe it or not, that's what triangulation in its most basic form is all about. So let's see white with correct play from this position. So king f2 and now e3, good move. And of course if you take king into e3, there is king e5. So king e2, good move or even king f3. And after king e5, you take king into e3 and white is winning. So this is how Silman explains triangulation. Then there is a box which says basic triangulation is a maneuver where the king steps to the side and then moves forward diagonally, thus losing a move and gaining the opposition. This is what I really like about the book. He's not in a hurry to explain the concepts. He's patient and that's how he teaches these very, very uh, complicated at times theories. So going back to the position, now you realize that if in this exact position, which we were discussing, if black had the move, 
then you're winning because if he goes king d8, you have king d6. If he goes king c7, you have king c5. And if he goes uh, king b8, again king d6 wins. So that's the reason why you triangulate, you go king c4, and then let's say black plays king uh, d8, then king d4, king c8, and king d5. So you moved in a triangle to give the move to the opponent, and now black is losing, he's in a zugzwang, Whatever he plays, he will lose. So, using Silman's techniques, you can learn a lot of different things. Okay, so there are a lot of different end games that are discussed in this book. For example, when you have a pawn and a rook and you have cut the opponent's king off and the pawn is on the fourth rank, which positions are winning? Where is it that black has drawing chances? And also, when you have a rook pawn, you have pushed it right up till the finish line. Uh, on the 7th rank and your king is cut in, then how many files do you have to cut the opponent's king in order to win? All these things are explained extremely well. Also, very complex endgames like 3 pawns each and an extra pawn for the opponent, uh, for you or your opponent and how to try to win or hold such endgames. So these are all the things that are there in the sections of rating wise until 2400. But I also think it's very useful for IMs and GMs to go through certain parts of this book because many times when you're playing rapid and blitz and when you're short of time, uh, you really want to know some of the endgames really well. Uh, for example, when you have two pawns, G and H pawn and a rook against king and rook, it's easily winning. But if you haven't uh, really re revised it, many times it could end in a stalemate. You know, you need to bring your king out many times to e7 and then give a check on d8 and exchange the rooks. You know, there are different ways. So, if you have gone through this material, it can help you to play faster over the board. Also, uh, after this entire section uh, on uh, rating wise, there is also two more chapters, uh, which is Endgames for Pleasure. You know, in the Endgames for Pleasure, uh, there are chapters like dominate, domination of pieces, there are uh, studies, you know, tactics and studies. And this is very interesting because uh, you also get to learn how to solve studies by great players like Benko and all these endgame experts. Mind you, in every section, when you finish what you have learned, there is a test. So you revise what you have learned. Now, the last section, which I find very interesting and I personally think is very useful, is the five greatest endgame players of all time. Now, who would that be for you? Uh, I think I agree with uh, Silman. He says the first one is Lasker, then there is Rubinstein, Capablanca, Fisher, and uh, Smyslow. You know, he's given these five players and they are selected endgames. All of them great uh, endgame players. Of course, it's not an exhaustive list. Uh, there are many endgames that these people have played which are beautiful, but Silman has placed some very interesting endgames which can motivate you to study endgames. I, I remember a very nice example. I was playing at the Asian Juniors in 2007 uh, and my opponent was S. Nitin, and we reached the final position uh, here <coughs> after 40 moves. And I thought that as black, I have uh, I have good chances to hold, although my opponent has an extra pawn. And we were, you know, we played the game, I lost it. And in the analysis room when I went, uh, there was this uh, GM, Alawi Muhammad, and he told us that, you know, this is winning for white. And I said, how can you say that? You know, I'm, I can defend it. I'm just a pawn down. And in rook end games, you know, a pawn down is nothing much. And he said... No, you must remember this uh, endgame between Rubinstein versus Lasker, page 478. So he played rook a5, pushing the rook back, rook to b7, and then rook a6. Now cutting the king off, and then after king f8, he started pushing the pawns e4, g4, h4. He created the weaknesses on the king side, and then penetrated with his king and won the game. This was excellent play by... Uh, Rubinstein, and this is what uh, the Grandmaster from Iran, uh, Alavi Mohammed, knew. And he just said it to us, 
and this is what I think is very important when you study end games. You should know some of the most famous end games. It can be so useful in your games. So I like that section and this is all about this book. Uh, I think it's one of the most interesting books written on end games before moving to maybe some end, uh, advanced books like Dworetsky's end game manual or fundamental chess end games by Carsten Mueller. This I think is a perfect book to read, to learn. It's uh, explained, everything is explained well and so you can become real expert in the in the end games that are covered here. <coughs> now the cost of this book if you look is $25. Uh, if you order it let's say from US or any other place it would take you a lot of time 25 euros plus shipping but in India we have got this at a special price for 1199 1199 I would like to thank Jeremy Silman for this great gesture for bringing down the prices of this book and mind you this is inclusive of shipping so you order this book from the links given in the description below from the chess base india shop and you will get this book delivered to your doorsteps in india for without any shipping cost uh, but you know today being first of uh, january the new year we want to have a special offer so the first 25 buyers will get it for 9.99 uh, a special discount offer only for the first 25 you will get it this book delivered to your doorstep for just 9.99 rupees uh, i hope that you go through this book uh, and you learn from it we got it because we thought it's extremely useful and I hope that it helps you to become a strong endgame player and a stronger chess player in 2019. Thank you so much for your time.